We are living in a global village and we are now conversing using the universal language which is English. However, is the use of English not sort of hindering us from understanding who we are as a people vis-a-vis -vis relating with our own knowledge systems and our own indigenous languages? Today, we want to talk about our indigenous languages as well as our indigenous knowledge systems and how we are affecting them or not or rather being affected by not using them. And joining us today is Mr. Joe Bettinguena, who is going to enlighten us and help us even delve more in this conversation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, as we start off our discussion, can you please tell us the importance of preserving or practicing one's own language and being aware of one's own knowledge system? Um, on the issue of languages, our, our development is primarily based on, uh, on language, uh, whatever developments that have taken place in history, it was mm. based on a people having a common language that we're sharing. From a biblical perspective, when God realized that people were, were building the Tower of Babel, he actually had to give them different languages because mm. within the language um, there was that unity. So God had to separate <laughs> them because of, 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 the, of a language. So from that perspective, uh, language therefore is somehow a key route to a community, to community development, to uh, national development, so to speak. And even in recent years, we've seen um, China developing because they have a common, a common language, is mm. uh, uh, far and wide. And uh, it's the case with Japan, it's the case with Singapore, it's the case with all the Caucasians, so to speak. Mm. They are developing because they have this common language that is bringing them together. From that perspective, therefore, uh, language is very key for, for development. Mm. Then on the part of indigenous knowledge systems, um, I, I would say um, all these developments that I've mentioned, all the civilizations that I've mentioned, were premised on people's own knowledges. Mm. So they, they, they did their development based on the knowledge systems that they um, developed over, over the years. Mm. So in, in our case, maybe, as, as Africa, our, our problem with development is coming from the fact that we are somehow importing uh, knowledge systems from elsewhere and in the process neglecting our own knowledge systems, in the process neglecting our own uh, indigenous languages. And what is it in our knowledge systems that we are probably not even aware of? Um, there is a lot really. Um, from, from time immemorial, mm. uh, Af Africa as we know it, was developing at maybe a relatively slower pace than mm. other civilizations, but there was development that was taking place, and that development was premised on their knowledge on how to predict, say, the rains, on how to solve conflicts, mm. on how to, to deal with issues to do with um, marriages, uh, based on, on, on their religion, based on their, on their culture, based on their environment, based even on the, on the political structures. So that development was important in the sense that it was developing uh, premised on the knowledge systems that were African. Uh, knowledge systems are therefore important in the sense that they are bringing ownership uh, to okay. whatever development that is taking place. It's not anything that is foreign. And maybe to bring in the issue of, of language, the, the understanding of our, of our development becomes better when we are using our own language rather than when we are, we are maybe using a foreign language, mm. when we are using you know, foreign technology. That might not be appropriate to our, to our environment, to, mm. our, to our society. Okay. And what value is there in our indigenous knowledge systems um, over what has already shaped the world? The question being, um, what can you do with Kalanga, Sutu, Ndebele, Shana, in a world that already puts more value in English, French, um, Dutch, for example? Okay. Um, my, my bias maybe will be on the issue of um, development and language. Okay. Um, in, in the sense that, as I've mentioned before, uh, the Chinese developed because they understood mathematics using their own languages. Mm -hmm. That was the case with um, Europe and the rest of Asia. Their mathematics is premised on, on their languages. 
So from that perspective, um, to me, development will only be stronger when we are embracing it as our own development. Mm. Um, with, with, the, with the revised curriculum, I think um, there was uh, some talk about you know, mathematics being taught using our local languages, mm. which I think to some extent it's, it's, a, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Hence the introduction of all these so-called um, minority languages, Yotonga, I think about 10 or so of these mm. minority languages are being taught uh, in schools, which is really a, a, a positive development within our education system. So from that perspective, um, my belief is that we need to give importance to our local languages for us to develop. As much as we would want to embrace um, the world, we need to embrace it and not forgetting who we are. Mm. And that's the importance of our languages. You spoke about the education sector in terms of um, having certain languages being certain subjects being taught in, in, in our local language. I remember my father told me that when he had to pass maths, he had, his teacher had to actively teach math to him in Nesindebele. Um, with English now being something more common within our schools, is that, not, is that something that is going to affect our societies in terms of we're learning everything, even Nesindebele, and I'm sure even Shona is now being taught um, in English. Um, is that not going to affect our societies? Um, maybe it, 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 it's, it's really a broader question, uh, but narrowing it down, I think we stand to, to analyze the results, say, after 10 years, okay. uh, with uh, maybe the introduction of these languages, uh, which happened about five years or so ago. We, we need to then sit down 10 years um, on and try to find out whether has that impacted positively on our education system or not. But by and large, I think it is a positive development in the sense that uh, our wiring really is, is premised on, on our indigenous languages. So at least for, for a certain stage in our, in our development, we need to be tied down to our, to, to our indigenous languages as much as uh, we may introduce foreign languages, your English, your French, mm. your Spanish, as you mentioned that we're living in a, in a global village. Yeah. So we can't really run away from in the introduction of the foreign languages. As much as the Chinese today, it's, it's, we have a lot of teachers who are living in uh, Zimbabwe going to teach English in, um, in, in China, China. Which, which is good. So China, in, in, in embracing the world, they are now taking in English as, as a foreign language. We can do the same, we emphasize our own languages, but at the same time, we need the fact that we need the French, the Spaniards, um, even the Chinese, um, we then teach these uh, foreign languages. But primarily, especially in the first four years of our mm. education, we should have an emphasis on our indigenous languages. So let's go home. Yes. We're sitting, we're, we're, we're in, a, in a home setup, a family setup. We have parents who would rather have their children learn English and rather speak English. So they don't speak to their children in, in their indigenous mother tongue, but they speak to them in English. What bearing does that have, um, not only to, to the child as an individual, but also to the society because we interact on a daily? Um, I would love to have my, my kids speaking fluent language, uh, uh, fluent English really, um, as much as I would love to have them speak my, my indigenous language fluently. Mm. So from that perspective, I think we are doing a disservice to our, to our children if you, mm. are, if you are taking them to the A schools where they are learning English, you know, they're learning Devele using English, English, so to say. Um, then when they get home, we are watching English shows, we are speaking in, in English. I think to some extent we are, we, are, we are somehow doing a disservice because at the end of the day, we still have, at least in 2019, we still have our, our grannies, we still have our malumes out there. Mm. We still, you know, still speak uh, Debele proper, we still speak Tonga Kalama proper. And um, my child, if I was to take her to a rural home, um, they have a disadvantage fitting into, into the community. Mm. They become detached from their community. So from that angle, I would, I would believe it's better to have, say, we take them to the best school where they, they will learn English. But at the same time at home, we try our best to use our own languages. 
for the sake of the child and uh, fitting into, into a society that as much as it is globalized, it still has uh, people who are, who are speaking these uh, indigenous languages. So what are the dangers um, that, that children face if they're not being um, spoken to in their indigenous languages? What are they losing out on? What knowledge are they losing out on? Um, for example, in terms of maybe um, food or dressing, what are they losing out on every time we're speaking to them in English and not using our indigenous language to communicate with them? Okay. Um we, we are breeding Americans, we are breeding the British in okay. our own homes. We, we are technically losing it, mm. uh, just starting from the, from the issue of the language. So if, if, our, if our television, if our conversation is, is, is English-based within, within a home setting, we are, we are taking our, our, away our, our being. Actually, we are taking away their being, in a way with the, the generation Y or so. They are, their Africanness is somehow lost in the fact that the language is not being emphasized. Because from the language, that's where we, we, we understand our food heritage. That's where we understand even our, even our clothing heritage. It mm. really comes from the language. So if we are losing the language, we are therefore losing everything. Our indigenous knowledge systems are tied onto our languages. So if we forget the indigenous language, we are automatically forgetting the indigenous knowledge and we are automatically di discarding um, we, we, we are detaching ourselves from from africa and maybe linking with uh, europe mm. with america which um, as much as we are globalized we are not at a stage to be at par with those countries we still have a lot you know to catch up and for us catching up we need to go back to the to the to the basics you know, at, at independence, most of our countries adopted what was known as um, African socialism. You know, <coughs> going back to Africanness, but you know, with with the concept of bringing in capitalism to some extent, it it failed um, automatically because it was a challenge to to the capitalist system. And being independent in the '60s, it was it was during the Cold War era where we have um, the Soviet Union being socialist, America and Britain being, uh, being capitalist. So by taking the African route, the African socialism route, we were directly challenging, you know, yeah. um, capitalism. So we didn't have the support of, of the Western world, uh, so to speak, and our development therefore failed. You know, Zambia tried it with what they called humanism, it failed. Nyerere tried it with, um, with, with uh, um, whatever, you know, he failed. Then we had uh, Libya, you know, Libya, they tried, uh, their concept was known as Jamairia. They tried. Uh, but at the end of the day, all these um, ideologies collapsed. We tried it in Zimbabwe, our own version of, of socialism, but it failed. It failed because it didn't get, you know, the support from the, from the global world. But if we are to get to a point where our, our Africanness is, is supported, within that globalized system, we would succeed as a continent, we would succeed um, as, as a country, we would mm. succeed as a people. So development therefore shouldn't um, be premised on us forgetting our, our culture, forgetting our languages, forgetting our, our knowledge systems. It's an issue of bringing um, that which is good from China and mixing it with that which is good from Zimbabwe. We borrow something from Malawi, borrow something from, from America, we bring it together, we synergize, then we move on. But one can argue that um, our indigenous knowledge system is primitive and would say, why would I then want to even bring my children up understanding Isindebele as it's supposed to be understood because it's primitive. I can't, I can't bring up a child to be a global citizen if I'm dwelling on, on just the indigenous knowledge system. Um, what do you have to say about such a mindset? I think it's a, it's a fair line of thinking, but it's a <laughs> bit dangerous mm. uh, in, in the sense that being, being Debele itself should be made a brand. Being Tonga itself should be made a brand. Um, 
we have actually the whites coming to Africa just to have a test of, of Africa, but we are denying them that, that Africanness because mm. we are conforming to, to their own standards. So as much as we are globalized, we need to, to remain as Africans. Mm. We play at a global, you know, at, at, at a global uh, platform, but without really running away from us being Africans. So to say, um, teaching someone their Shona, their Kalanga, their Tonga, their Ndebele is being uh, primitive, it's, it's a bit dangerous. Uh, going back to the point that for any meaningful development to take place, it will only take place uh, based on us accepting who we are mm. and building, uh, you know, small blocks from where we are, going to where we, we want to be. The same way um, the, the Anglo-Saxons have done it, the same way the Chinese have done it, uh, the same way other communities have done it. So developing doesn't necessarily mean discarding our, ourselves mm. and, you know, adopting foreign cultures. But it's a way of, of bringing in what is good from China, what is good from elsewhere, yeah. and we move forward. Is it not difficult for us as Africans to try and have that um, united knowledge system by virtue of the fact that we've got different tribes, different languages in one continent as compared to if you go to Europe, um, America and India. All these other, and Asia, they all have one form of um, knowledge system um, despite the fact that they probably have different um, groups within their own system but they've got one um, knowledge system. For us in Africa, we've got different I don't even know how many tribes we have in Africa alone that speak different dialects, speak different languages. Is that, not going, is that not something that is proving to be difficult for us to actually have one set of knowledge system? Um, it is a challenge. Like in Zimbabwe, we've got is it, is it 15 indigenous languages, mm. you know, official 15 indigenous languages. It, it's a bit of a challenge. But again, it then narrows down to us as Zimbabweans to respect, say, the Kalanga people and have them develop from their Kalanga context, to have them develop from their Ndebele context, to have develop. So, so it will then bring in the issue of uh, devolving the systems of government from a central point to a local point. That's, that's maybe a story for another day. But generally, it goes back to that point. Mm. As, as much as we're saying, as, as Africans, we want to, to develop from an African perspective we are simply saying the European system is not very much working in our context. Mm. The American system is not working in our context. So let, let's bring it to Africa. After bringing it to Africa, we have to narrow it down again to, to, to Binga, where we have the highest concentration of, of the Tonga-speaking people, to, to Wanki, to, to, to Plum Tree, mm. um, and so forth. And, and the other thing, um, our indigenous knowledge systems are not very different. You have um, the Ndao, they, they respect, the, they have the same knowledge systems when it comes, for example, to, to the preservation of the environment. Mm. They have somehow some, some commonalities, so the, the language might be different. But when it comes to, say, our respect for our forests, it's, it's basically common. For example, in Zimbabwe, um, all, all, all indigenous people believe that it's, it's, it's a taboo, for example, to kill, um, to kill an, an animal, to hunt, to hunt down an animal during its gestation period. So this is the case with the Tonga people, it's the case with the Kalang, mm. it's the case with the, with the, with the Ndao. So, so that said, our, our indigenous knowledge system is generally common. Um, I remember even the case with, um, this is Burundi in, in East Central Africa. They, they know that... Um, when the, the birds are, are nestling from, uh, from, uh, you know, from, uh, from lower parts of the trees, they understand that this means they won't be, uh, you know, the rain season won't be that good. Mm. We also have the same in, in, in Mutar. They know that if you see the behavior, or if you see the birds behaving this way, this means that won't receive, you know, um, enough rains. Then they will put up systems to, to handle the drought and everything. So generally speaking, our indigenous knowledges as Africa are generally common as much as our languages might be different. Mm. 
So it's, it's, it's really an issue of saying we respect our, our languages, we respect our indigenous knowledge systems as the Tonga, as the Kalanga, as the Karanga, as, as the Ndao. Um, then we meet at a common place as these different types and dialects. And we also meet at a common place at, at national level. How can we make our indigenous knowledge systems more attractive, especially to the younger generation who probably may not care that much about it? Very interesting. I think we, we really have a challenge um, in that respect, a serious challenge for that matter. Um, our, our system, because maybe we have brought down everything that is Western, we have glorified everything that is Western, we therefore um, go to a point where we are detached from even our food. I always refer to, to our food. We don't really appreciate our, our, our food. Mm. We, we appreciate uh, Western foods. Uh, so we really have a challenge as, as a, as a, you know, from a local community up to national level to then bring that aspect of embracing um, our heritage. But we still can go back and the fact that maybe we are, we are talking about this, it's, it's, it's really a step in the right direction. But again, we can then infiltrate the education system, try to bring up, uh, you know, a curriculum that, that will be biased towards who we are. Mm. As much as it is a curriculum that embraces, you know, cultural diversity, it embraces globalization, it should also emphasize the importance of, of who we are. So from the education system, that's a point of departure. Our, 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 our media, it should really talk about this. Uh, we should, you know, go, go out there and, and promote what we have as a continent bring it to the, to the little ones, they understand where we are coming from and everything. We should also document our, our challenge maybe as Africans that most of um, the heritage that we had, most of um, the rich history that we have was never documented. As I was saying, um, when the white man came to Africa, he found an, an, an Africa that was not documenting its history, it was not documenting its, its heritage. And he therefore considered a, a Africa as a dark continent because we didn't really have, even, even our languages were not documented, even our, our knowledge systems were not being documented. And they, they then became a superior people because they had been documenting uh, their history since time immemorial. Mm. So from that perspective, we also need to, as much as we're educating this, we need to have it documented in, in whatever format, be it in, 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 in audio format, in video format, mm. in textual format. We need to document our history, we need to document our heritage, we need to document our indigenous systems. Mm. That way they, they, then, they can then become um, attractive uh, to the in, inquisitive learn. And again, if this is taught at a tender age, it will make sense. I've, I've realized um, how in, in recent years we are naming our, our, our children, you know, African names, which is, which is very, very interesting. Our parents in the 80s, in the 70s, were naming us English, French names and mm. everything. But there is, a, there is a change that is taking place. In a way, as Africans, we are, we are embracing our, our mm. Africanness, which is really um, in the right direction. Even when it comes to the issue of um, our food heritage, there are areas where people are trying to really rebrand our food heritage and, and it's, a, it's a step in the right direction. And again, um, there's an issue of, um, of, of embracing you know, globalization, mm. bringing these two together. That which is positive you know, from, from Europe, we need to embrace it. Mm. And you, know, you, fuse, you fuse in that which is African and that way um, we can go forward. I, I, I attended an expo, a food expo, and uh, we were taught of a um, pizza, you know, and mm. a topping, which is a good thing. Then maybe for the Shona culture, uh, they're also selling cookies with some, some termites, um, okay. toppings and everything, which is um, a step in the right direction. So I bring in, you know, the African concept as much as we're embracing um, globalization. So I'm not really far. But we need to, to quicken our pace, mm. embrace what is um, foreign, bring in what is indigenous, 
then it gets attractive uh, to, 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 to the young. To um, the younger generation. Yes. And just in closing, can we say our indigenous knowledge systems, can they be something that can compete with, with the English um, knowledge system, for example, because we can we know that when we're speaking about knowledge systems worldwide, we don't forget the Chinese, we don't leave out the Indians, but African is not there. Do you think we can actually get to a point where we can be mentioned amongst you know the top knowledge systems in the world? I think very much so. We can take Africa to the world. Our problem have been bringing the world to to Africa. We've mm. been we've been taking <coughs> and not you know selling Africa out. So if we are to stand out and say, this is what we believe in, this is what we are, we can really take it out to the world. Um, if, if we take our, our heritage, I mean, there are, there are dozens of, of expos where we can go and sell brand Zimbabwe, brand Africa. So it takes me and you to, to come to a point of embracing our Africanness and say, we are taking this to the mm. world. That way we'll get, you know, get realized that Africa has something to offer. Our, our challenge maybe was the fact that when we got colonized, mm. we then got very much uh, brainwashed. We were not only politically, economically, you know, colonized. We also got to a point of being intellectually colonized. Mm. We, we, we really lost it. So that, that being said, we need that mental decolonization mm. where we get to a point of saying we embrace who we are. We stand for what we believe in. Mm. Then we take it to the world. I believe that uh, as much as we need the world, the world also needs Africa. Yeah. So if we get to that point of saying this is what Africa has, uh, this is what Africa has to offer to the world, we will stand out as, as a continent and show what we have and it will be embraced the way the same way we are embracing you know other cultures also get embraced by the world thank you so much for joining us today thank you for having me. Turn up a child in the way that he should go, so that when he grows older, he will not depart from it. These are words from the Holy Book. And I believe these are words that actually ring true even in our generation and in our African society. Turn up your child in the way that you want him to go. Turn up your child understanding and knowing our indigenous knowledge systems. Is this something that is primitive? Maybe you might think it is, but others believe that it's something that will make us even better global citizens. Join in on the conversation and tell us what you think. You know what to do. Follow the link, hashtag the necessary hashtags that are on your screen. Ika Malami, Chawe. This has been Cultural Expressions. See you next week.